with fractions, you multiply across the top, you multiply across the bottom, and then you simplify. Well, we don't want to make this problem any bigger than it is. So really what's going to happen is when we multiply straight across, it's just going to combine these into one single expression. So this is going to be 5 times x minus 1. I'm going to leave it in factored form because we're going to end up simplifying. Um, so I'm going to leave it in factored form. Now I am going to rearrange the denominator. I'm going to put that 25 in front because uh, constants go in front of linear factors. So I'm just going to rearrange that denominator. The order of multiplication doesn't matter. Okay. So uh, now this is just what we did yesterday. Simplify. Okay. We've got x minus 1 in the numerator and in the denominator. So that goes away. 5 over 25. We can simplify to 1 over 5. So we've got a 1 left in the numerator. Okay, you got to keep that place. You got to keep your numerator. That other stuff doesn't just jump to the numerator because you canceled everything out of the numerator. Okay, and in the bottom, we're left with 5 times x minus 2. And that is the simplified version. You do not. You can. Okay, you can. You can write it as 5x minus 10. Um, just be aware that if you keep writing, I keep grading. So if you make a mistake later on, I'm going to have to count off for it um, when you could have. You can just stop with the factored form, okay? And I suggest that, okay? Um, but yes, 1 over 5x minus 10 is equivalent. Okay, let's look at B. Let's look at B. <clears throat> now, honestly, to save space, I'm not going to, like, rewrite this as one big fraction, I'm just going to say, okay, well, it's multiplication, so I'm just going to kind of extend the fraction line there. It's just going to become one big happy family anyway, so <clears throat> I'm going to put parentheses around any linear factors. Those are minus ones. I'm going to put parentheses around them so I don't get confused there. But I've got an r minus one in the top and in the bottom, so those go away. Uh, now, I am going to take one step here to rewrite this just so that it's it's clear if you haven't <coughs> if um, this is not very clear to you how this simplifies I'm going to rewrite r squared as r times r so I can cancel one of those r's so we are left with 1 over r is our simplified expression again the r was in the denominator so you got to put that 1 in the numerator okay those were pretty simple examples. They were already in factored form. Let's go to some where we have to factor. I'll give you a second to write that down, and then we'll jump into it. Factoring. Always ask ourselves, is there a GCF? First numerator does not have a GCF, so I'm just going to go ahead and go to all right. Well, I've got a binomial times binomial. 2x times x is what's going to give me 2x squared. Factors of 6, usually 3 and 2. And actually, if I put them in that order, one's positive and one is negative. It needs to go negative, positive. The outside gives me positive 4x. The inside gives me negative 3x. Those combine to give me a positive 1x. All right. Now, the second numerator, okay, it does have a GCF. So I need to start by taking out an X from that second numerator. And we are left with X squared minus 3X plus 2. I'll factor that more in the next step. <clears throat> okay, first denominator, no GCF. This one's pretty easy, x plus 5 times x minus 1. Second denominator has a GCF of 2x. When we take that out, we're left with 2x minus 3. Yes, sir. I'm just doing one thing at a time. 
All right, so for the sake of space and time, I'm going to go ahead and see if, there, if there's anything that I can cancel out at this point, and there is. We've got 2x minus 3 in the numerator and in the denominator. We have just a GCF factor of x in the numerator and in the denominator. That's all we can do right now. Okay, so I'm going to continue with my factoring because I hadn't completely factored it yet. I've still got to factor x squared minus 3x plus 2. Now, if you can do that previous step in one, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. I'm just trying to take it slowly right now while we're learning this. Okay, um, x squared minus 3x plus 2 factors into x minus 2 times x minus 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. When you add them, you get negative 3. And in the denominator, all we've got left are x plus 5, x minus 1, and don't forget about this 2 right here, so I'll put that in the front. That's where our coefficients are supposed to go, or just plain constants are supposed to go. And now we can cancel one more factor, x minus 1, in the numerator and in the denominator. So our simplified form is x plus 2 times x minus 2 over 2 times x plus 5. And yes, you can multiply that out. That would be x squared minus 4 over 2x plus 10. Those are equivalent expressions. All right, one more. Not quite as big as the last one. A little bit smaller. x squared plus 2x minus 15 over x plus 2 times x squared plus 7x plus 10. In the denominator. I think I forgot to say the 1 over. Okay x squared plus 2x minus 15, that factors into x plus 5 times x minus 3. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. 5 minus 3 is 2. There's just a times 1 in the other numerator, so it doesn't really do anything for us. We don't need to write that. Multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. That first denominator is a linear factor can't do anything, I'm just going to put parentheses around it. Second denominator would be x plus 5 times x plus 2. 5 times 2 is 10, 5 plus 2 is 7. So, x plus 5 in the numerator and in the denominator, and that's it. Uh, now, we've got two x plus 2 is in the, in the denominator. x plus 2 times x plus 2 to save myself some space. I'm just going to write that as x plus 2 squared because I've got x plus 2 times x plus 2. Multiplying something by itself is the same as squaring it. 